Welcome back. This is Still Rise and Shine, and we're beaming live from Uyo, the capital city of Akwabam State, Nigeria. Several, several conversations have happened on here. The only way you can catch up with that is to follow us across all the social media platforms. You'd find that at Spectrum TV. Dot ng. At this time, we've been navigating into our focus conversation and we are looking at most of the conversation that has plagued um, literally all the Easter messages that we received in this season from clergymen, the president of the Federal Republic, the vice president and several other outstanding Nigerians. What have, have we been pushing for and clamoring for since after the February 25th and March 18th? elections at this time um joining us to have this conversation is victor anilaji who is the founder of epay and himself a former presidential aspirant under the people's democratic party and it's just Good morning. Thank you for having me. Great. Uh, so nice to see your faces again. It's so nice <laughs> to be on the show. Awesome. Thank you. Thank uh, why, why do I feel that your topic today is a setup for me? <laughs> no, it's, it's not a setup. <laughs> because I, 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 I do not think that um, I come in peace. Exactly, yeah. because that's going to be my, you know, that was going to be my first question. Do you actually believe in this peace and reconciliation move? You look like someone who doesn't believe in it. Uh, well, I believe in peace. I believe in reconciliation. I believe in reconstruction. I believe in development. But in all of this, there can never be a peace or reconciliation without justice. So the pro issue here is, why don't you replace that word peace for justice? Because for any society to attain that level of peace, because peace is not the process. Peace is a product of a process. So peace is not just something you just jump into. Peace, you, you, a society or a country witness peace after a series of, of, uh, of transactions. After justice, you get peace. So I, I find it so difficult why the APC government is calling for peace. Why are they not calling for justice? Oh, I think we could, get, uh, okay. get a peace with, with, without justice. The right way for we to attain peace in Nigeria today is for us to create room for justice. Nigerians are bleeding. Nigerians are highly disappointed. Okay, so I think that um, network, network is actually is on the way of our conversation this morning. I just hope. I'm talking about peace right now, after an election. After every election, it, it doesn't come peace. Post election is not a period of peace. It's a period. It's a, it's a period where justice is being served, right? So, and once people get justice, they will be at peace. I don't care losing an election but let me lose through the justice system right i don't care if anybody i'm supporting is going to lose an election but let that person lose justifying or or what other english am i going to use to describe it so if the apc government is calling for for peace i don't know how do they want to achieve this peace now now they uh, should be able to Victor, tell us how do they want to achieve it Victor and Elijah, so it's not about the apc here it's about a lot of other nigerians that mm. think that the election have come the election has gone the election has you know torn the country apart a little bit but we need we still need our country together nigeria is the only country that we have and if we continue with the back and forth this person won the election this person uh, uh mandate is stolen we will not grow as a country so i think that a lot more people are the people pushing for this peace and reconciliation but you know where the clause of all of this conversation is now is that they are even asking the incoming government to make sure that they push the process of peace and reconciliation to further unite the country together now how possible do we see that happening is the question i i don't see that being possible 
especially when it's coming from APC. APC is the in, incoming government that you are you're talking about. Yeah. Of course, yes. I, I, I really don't see. You can't, you can't, you see. Except we just want to sound formal on air and just say things that people want to hear. You can't deprive millions of Nigerians who voted for a particular candidate and you, 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 you deprive them of their choice and you want to speak of peace. For me, this has been the, the issue that we are facing as a people. You know what people are, what, what the APC government is trying to tell us? Forget about the injustice that was served to you. Let's move on. How can I move on? You took my life from me. You took my breath from me. And you are telling me, move on with what? What am I? What, what are we going to move on with? Every country is built on hope. We had hope in the person that we wanted to vote for. We went to the polling unit. We voted for that person. You turn it the other way around. You took our hope from us. You are telling us to, to, to be at peace. I don't understand. There can be no peace without justice. There can be no peace without hope. I think I think just something I really I don't know if we've talked about this with Anila before, but when we are you know mm. talking about um you know the whole win of the person that we perceive most Nigerians wanted, what if in actual sense okay his network you know has you know breached again, but what if in actual sense this particular presidential candidate did not win, win the, the elections? elections? Because I think this is something we need to also have as a, okay Anila, you are back. I'm asking, yeah. when we are fielding mm. the emotions of the person we wanted is not the person we got, although we all went out and mass to vote. Yes, Nigerians might have gone out and mass to vote for a particular candidate. But what if in all counting and all standards, this particular person in question did not win the elections? Is it not worth it that we sheath our swords and move on, you know, from this particular place that we seem to be putting the country in? Let's not also okay, forget so, that the Labour Party so, came third in the election. Yes, it's, it wasn't even the second runner-up in the, the Labour election. Party was so, not the second. That is the rigged result now. We have the authentic results. I, I lived in Lagos. I was deprived by talks not to cast my vote during the governorship election. I was at the polling unit. I was driven away by 14 guys. See, eh, we can't sit in our AC studio and, and determine the 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 mind or the fate of nigerians nigerians are bitter anybody coming to talk about peace today must talk about justice and this is the problem we'll be facing in our country you beat us you deprive us you kill us you nail us you you starve us and you tell us be peaceful but then that that period is over until we start standing for justice. We are not standing for peace right now. This is not the time for peace. We are not calling for peace. We are calling for justice. The APC-led government should stand out now and call for justice. Okay, they so let me let me ask this question, sir. If you were justice. not, let, let me ask this question. If you were not in support of Go Labour ahead. Party, would you still sound the way you sound on this morning? If I'm not in support of what? If you were not in support of the Labour Party, would you sound the way you sound on this morning? If I'm not in support of the, the Labour Party, Party, will yes. I sound the way I'm, I'm sounding? Would you not want peace, if the the reverse, want peace if, and reconciliation? If the, if the reverse was the case, if a uh, uh, Labour Party had rigged an election and declared themselves as winner, as against APC winning the election, don't forget, I have a clip which some persons have sent to me. I have a clip last year when, when I said on one, one of the national television that the next president is going to come from either APC or, P or PDP. After this interview, I will send it to, to you privately. You will see it. I said it on a national television. I am not surprised what happened, but I knew that it was going to go the route of either APC or PDP. I said it on a national television. But the truth is that that doesn't justify my, my motive. I right now, I am hot. Millions of Nigerians are offended. We, whether it favors me or not, right? At least by God's grace, I don't think that God has not blessed me, right? I can decide to work with whoever I choose to work with. But what we are saying is that if we can't continue this country like this, it happened during o OBJ's. Okay, serious concerns. The network is yeah. a serious issue today because we need to be, um, you know, th there's an English word I would use. 
be able to stand different, you know, when we're having some of these conversations. Yeah, let's quickly take this call. Uh, let's quickly take this call, Alina and Elijah. Hello. Hello. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Michael once again from Cross River State. I Michael from Cross River State. Okay, yeah. Michael okay. from Cross River State. Please go ahead. But let's try to avoid the, so much noise at your background, please. Yeah, I want to speak on the on the topic of peace and translation. Okay, go ahead quickly. Uh, I want to ask you a question. Does reconciliation comes before peace, or peace comes before reconciliation? And if you have been deprived of peace, do you see set for reconciliation, or you set for justice, peace, peace? Which of the ones should we take? So anybody who is calling for reconciliation at this time is wasting his time. The, the peace would have been started during the electionary period. But you have prodded the elections, destroyed people of their rights, you disfranchise some, and you are now calling for peace. You say, let's forgive and go ahead and uh, swallow our bitter key. Is that how it's done in other nations? All right. Okay, thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so thank much, you. There's Michael. so much noise coming in from your background, please. We have to take down that call. But I think his he point has, has much been made. made. His point. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's just a question of some of the things Anilaju was talking about. Are we pushing for peace and reconciliation before we have, you know, established that justice has been served? So I think justice is, at this time, with the way the conversation is going, justice is more important than peace and reconciliation. But, uh, but I but think we're talking process yeah. also. You are, we're talking process. Process. And How do you go about this? We cannot, the truth is, we cannot continue crying over spilled milk. That is just the truth. And we cannot further tear the country apart because exactly. we are looking for justice. But I'm going to ask you a question, Anin Laju. Fantastic, you have made the position that justice is needed first before we begin to talk about peace and reconciliation. Now, do you think that in the country that we are, that we have a good justice system that can give us the justice that we're seeking? So, this is the real discussion. So, this is where we all should be putting our energy. The Nigerian judiciary system has the opportunity now to bring the peace that is needed in Nigeria by doing the right thing. You can't go the wrong way and expect a positive result. You can't take a negative action and expect a positive result. So what we should be doing now, both the media, both the APC government, is to ask the judiciary system to give justice. Let justice be said. Like I said, and you asked me a very straight question. If my candidate lost an election, I am not going to. We, we really have to have this conversation this morning I, I because it's quite interesting saying. the way it is turning yeah. out this morning. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to ask Anilaju, when you say let the justice system. Okay, fantastic. Just go ahead on your line of thoughts before yeah. I ask my so next if, question. If we know that the person that I have been announced as the winner today actually won the election we are no fools now for me oh, you, you know you, you know what the way i see this this same rigging of election happened during obj's time we said oh let's give room for peace let's go ahead let the, the country develop we we kept quiet it happened during Barry's time we said no let's give room for peace Let, let's move ahead we kept quiet you want us to do the same thing the question i want to ask us is have Nigeria developed? Have we grown? If we keep on saying let's call for peace after every election and throwing away justice, has it helped us? Has it added to our GDP? Our GDP is still going down. Development is still nowhere. And we want to go this route. We can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. At this time, every media houses, every Nigerian should be are calling for justice and not peace because the truth about it is that what we call peace is just silencing the the, the citizens denying the citizens of their fundamental human rights now nigeria is not secured now nigeria is not developed our currency is going down every day at the rate of, of unemployment has risen to over 40 percent right and I, I, see 
true peace you don't even call for peace my dear once you do the right thing once you follow the right process you walk into peace you don't have to call you there's no need calling people let's come and settle an issue you do the right thing everything settles itself so okay. what me i'm saying is that Victor and Elijah, I, I let's, let's even come back to the uh you know the justice that we're talking about seeking for justice mm. it's okay to call for justice to seek for justice but in a situation where the justice uh systems comes up to say that it is um you know the apc government that truly won the elections or it is the pdp government that won the election or it's even the labor party presidential candidate that won the election will that make the judicial system you know um how do i put it now would it make the judicial system viable enough would we say that yes. they, have, they have done the right thing if they come up tomorrow to say that with all the judicial processes that has taken place, would we say that the judicial system has done us good as a nation? Even with the facts that is presented to us, mm. with the record that we have, Labour Party won the presidential election. That is for you. If that is a Labour Party Nigeria supporter. Nigeria. Pardon? I said, that's for you, a Labour Party supporter. That's not for the me. APC, the APC person me. will also tell you that, that APC that, won the elections. No, 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 no. We, we have evidences. PDP have the same record. Okay, the network is just, you know, really there. And But something Victor Aniladu raised also, once he answers the question that I want us to talk about is in the... In the right. Okay, okay, so, go ahead. So, PDP have the records that labor won. Labor had the record that they won. The international uh, body, because of the way they observed the election, believed that Nigerians voted for Labor Party. So it seemed as if it's only APC that is just on their own, if you ask me. And that's why you're not getting that response from the international community. How many presidents have sent a congratulatory message to the so-called INEC president elect? There are very few. They are not. They are not up to six. For over a hundred countries in the world, and to me, anybody that comes on air now to say APC won the election, you, you are just making a mockery of yourself. Because it's obvious to everybody in the country, majority of the voters, that they voted for Labour Party. You could see what happened in Abia states. Go on. The day they announced that Labour won the election, people, there was celebration everywhere <laughs> i stay in lagos the day they announce INEC announced their their candidate as the winner not even a street cannibal you can't you can't deny people of their their choice and anybody that is just saying nigerians to keep quiet eh? you are building a time so, so for you it is justice first before we, get, we begin to talk about 100%. peace and reconciliation we, we, but it leaves me wondering for how long will this seeking for justice take us With, I, I, yeah. I think let's you know piggyback on that when we are talking about justice and Elijah was raising a concern of something we have seen over time every time there is an election and there is a perception Perceived, I must say, the, there is a perceived winner of the election. Then we now see concessions conceding. Oh, let's concede for peace. Now, when we say let's leave pushing for tribunals and conversations that might, you know, question the system and the process to bring out a different result as what has been announced. What is that thing we usually call peace? Because it's more like uh, so that there will be no problem in the country. Let yeah, the person be no that was wars yeah, and let the person who was announced as winner just go. just go. Let's just go so that we can have peace. What exactly are we afraid of as a country if an announced president elect is questioned? If the credibility of an election is questioned? Yes, yes, because the Nigerian system of election since uh, 1999 has been in, about rigging election. So those who wants to be announced as the winner, always they are always in the side of those who have rigged the, the election. So uh, whenever you tell them, let us pursue justice, instead of your so-called peace, they are, they are always against it because they know that following justice will deprive them or will make them not to be announced 
Mm. Okay, so um, maybe the calls can come in now because I know that our phone lines has I'm been really buzzing, buzzing <laughs> because of this particular conversation. But for Victor and Elijah, he seems to go for the path of justice first before we even begin even to Michael talk about yeah, Kosovo. before we begin to talk about peace and reconciliation. But the question is, for how long? Okay, before we put you on again, uh, and Elijah, let's take this particular caller. Please turn down the volume of the television sets. Please turn it down totally. Turn it down totally. Hello, good morning. This is Olari Waji from Kassina. What's your name, please? Olari from Kassina. Okay, Olari Waji from Kassina. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, there is a statement I heard from that man now that will be winning the election. And that is what I'm trying to tell you these people the other time before the line cut off. You see, when you look at the, especially in Nigerian political uh, arena, we go for poll for two reasons, either for the party or for the candidate. You understand? So now, when you see the Labour Party, now, is the statement, as I said the other time, this uh, OBJ statement gives these people more space them to come out and be claiming that they win the election. So, how many states will be lead? Now, for you to know that people go for the candidate, not for the party. He lead in many states that he didn't get any finish from there. OP is not the kind of candidate that you can take on PSPDP and APC. Or but just take men to motivate them to come out and say that we, we win the election, we win the election. You understand that people go for OP, not the Labour Party. So OP doesn't have the right to come and say, I win. If nobody knows him in this very particular area, it's because of the problem within the PDP and the APC. Making the man get what he gets. Muslim Muslim ticket from the SDC crack their customer down. Uh, from the uh, uh, PDP side, the, uh, all these are aggressive uh, governors that know it's, it's in South, it's Southern Town. It's no more. It's make a big get from the PDP. You understand? So let us uh, clarify this thing. Obi didn't win election. Well, I met you know, win the election, not Obi. All right, all right, so Olan Raji, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Olan Raji. Your point has been duly gotten. Thank but, you but, for but, your time. But I think we need to clear some certain yeah, things exactly, that he exactly. said there. Um, of course, the Labour Party has won six seats in the Senate and 34 seats in the House of Representatives. So, Larry Waju, you were absolutely and one, and one wrong. Gubernatorial when you asked, seat. Yes, and, and one gubernatorial seat. So you were absolutely wrong saying that the Labour Party did not win any seats mm. in the House of Reps. Six seats. We're also trying to have conversations that are devoid of unnecessary emotions. Yes. Yeah, also. Okay, so um, I, I think we still have Victor and Ilaju right there. So Victor, yeah. you can you can even start off from where Olari Waju ended. No, react okay, to so, that because so. you were his, you know, <laughs> his target. Yeah. Yes. So, let me say it the way it is. The INEC process of uh, election was go to the polling units, cast your votes. At the end, we will submit the results on our platform online for every Nigerian to see. And when we go to the co collation center to announce the results, we have two screens. On one screen, it will be showing you what we have online. On the other screen, it will be showing you what we have as our physical copy. The first question I want to ask Mr. Olari Waju, did INEC follow those process? No, those process was not followed. INEC did not follow their own process. My own polling unit, after INEC have announced the presidential uh, election, it took them two more weeks for them to upload the result. And as you speak right now, the result is not clear. It's glory. As that day, as that two, two days ago, INEC was still uploading results on their online platform. The question is, where did they get the results that they are uploading on their online platform? 
And the process they said was that after you vote, we upload on our, our online platform, then the next thing we announce the results. So why did you bypass the results that you said you are going to uh, post on the online platform and start announcing the results? And after announcing, you are not coming to post. That itself alone, that process alone, have disenfranchised Nigerians, millions of Nigerians, and have given room for APC to rig the election. Olari Wanju is just there, like every other APC paid supporter, saying what they want to say. But the question I always want to ask, did APC or INEC follow the INEC laid out guidelines of the election? If they say yes or no, we cannot know who is lying or who is not lying. Mm. And I know that they will agree with me that INEC did not follow the laid down process. Follow the process. That's all we are saying. Okay. If you have to cancel the election, cancel. Let's go back and follow the process. Okay. I'm not here to just say that, that APC lost the election or a, 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 a Labour Party won the election. INEC gave us room to believe that there was something done behind the scene. Where did you get the announcement from? You told us, INEC, that on your, on your collation center, you are going to have two digital screens. One will show us your online results. One will show us your offline results. On the day you want to announce the results, you now off the one that is supposed to be showing us the all online results. You now went 4 a.m. in the morning. There's, there's a particular feed I was trying to, you know, pick up. I think we saw it on the front page of the newspaper this morning where INEC was saying um, that a particular process was not mandatory. I read it this morning and yeah, I was I wondering I because well. it's, it's, it's lining up with the things Victor and, and Ilaju is saying. Yeah, it was something in your guidelines and all of a sudden you're saying that particular guideline was not mandatory. Uh, you know, just circumventing the process as it were. So, Anilaji, we would just like you to, you know, give um, rest to your conversation this morning because we're absolutely out okay. of time. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, to crown it all, you now announce the, the the supposed person you felt won the election 4 a.m. in the night. I've never seen an election ceremony that will be announced in the night. What was the rush for? Why didn't you just wait till daybreak where people are sleeping? And see, eh, like I said, anybody that comes on air and tell you and tell you that uh, APC won the election, you are just making a fool of not just yourself, of your parents, of your entire family. Because Nigerians knows that APC lost the election. Totally. Okay, so let's put this to forward. rest. Let's put this to rest. Yes, going forward, mm -hmm. what do we do going as forward, a country? Going forward, yes, we are encouraging, we are believing on the judiciary system to actually let justice prevail at this point. But if they fail to do that, whatever be the response of the citizens, nobody will blame the citizens for, for taking power into their hands because we gave INEC the the, 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 the respect to conduct a, a, a free and fair election, they failed. We are taking it to the judiciary system to be able to give justice to the appropriate winner, which is the Labour Party. In case they fail and the citizens act the other way around, I don't think you will not you will not say the citizens are not peaceful people. Well, I, I, I think that's not people. just the way to go about mm. that. But again, these are all the opinions of Victor and Elaju mm. uh, on, on this uh, particular issue here. But we want to say and very millions big. of young Nigerians. Well, uh, you, not you, just can, you can. You <laughs> This is. <laughs> Thank you so take much. Take your interview. Take, take your interview, please. Eh? Next week or this week, take your interview to the streets and and get information from the streets. You will not get anything short of what I just said here. Ask them right. justice or peace. Which one do you want? You are going to get more persons telling you we need justice. Fantastic. Why is I'm not, I'm, justice? I'm, no, no, no. I'm not even against justice, seeking mm. for justice. But let's not seek for justice carrying clubs and sticks and all of that and making more. If that will bring, bring us no, justice. No, no, we'll it, it, will yeah. it will not. It will not, Victor. It will not. not. I, I think you're Democrat enough to not call for those kinds of things. But we want to say a very uh, big thank you to you at this point. Thank you so much, Victor and Nilaju. Thank you so much. Yes, it's always a pleasure having you on set. It's, our time system. is up. We need to go. 
and um, oh yeah, serious issues, uh, peace yeah, and reconciliation yes, for Victor and I think and the Elijah. most important thing that yes. we've picked up from this conversation yes. is that justice comes before peace, peace and, reconciliation. and reconciliation. So the whole system in the country, the judiciary, INEC, everyone in the process needs to make sure that justice is served. And also what I would like to land on is whatever is served us as justice, quote and unquote, whatever. Yes. You know, let us be ready to take it to and take move it forward. and move forward. Yes. That's just the truth of mm -hmm. the matter. It is not a problem of it's not a thing of you carrying clubs and saying Nigerian youths are protesting. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the children of these politicians are oh, outside the country close. and yes. nowhere close. Mm -hmm. So this is where we draw the curtains. It's been a heated conversation on set this morning. And uh, we do appreciate you for all the calls and all the reactions you have given um, as to all the things we have actually discussed this morning. We'll definitely be here again tomorrow for more intense conversations. But thank you so much. My name is Janice Cobham. I'll definitely see you again tomorrow. My name is Uyai and I can thank you for being a part of the show and to everyone who called and our production crew. Let's do this again tomorrow. Bye-bye.